project that I'm working on and that is these um, fabric linen moths that are scented and I'm going to use them as a scented drawer moths and I'm going to be able to put these in my drawers to scent my clothing. So for our project, we're going to need some string, and this is just cotton kitchen string, a needle and thread, and you want a large eyed needle, some pins, a paintbrush, a cork, a couple of pipe cleaners, some scissors, Elmer's glue. We're going to need some cheesecloth. And then as our filler potpourri, I've got some lavender and a little bit of essential oil. And we are going to also need some cardstock and this is just fairly thin cardstock thing now i've made a couple of different moths and originally i'd seen these moths online and i've seen them made into brooches and for decoration but i wanted to turn them into something a little bit more practical so the, i've made the bodies filled with some potpourri in my case i'm just using some lavender and I'm using up old vintage um, linens, but you can use any kind of fabric. And now I've got my scented moth, which smells like lavender, and I can throw it in my drawer and scent my clothing. It also makes a fantastic gift. So I've actually created a couple of different designs just to get some different sizes. So I've got one that looks like this. It's kind of like a butterfly effect and then I've got this larger one which is like a larger moth and I've also done one where I painted and kind of tie dyed the moth but this body I actually sewed and these bodies are just made of cheesecloth there's no um, there's no paint on them because I'm going to put them in my drawer and I don't want to take the chance of maybe rubbing off some of that paint onto your clothing unless you're using a color fast paint or fabric paint, which you can definitely do. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our pattern. So I've printed out uh, some different patterns which I've attached to the video. And basically there's four different sizes, slightly different in wings. And I'm gonna take some card stock, or card stock. And so this is just a regular piece of paper, fax paper or, or computer paper. And this is a, uh, it's actually a gloss, slightly thicker stock. So basically, when you see, there is more resistance in this than this. This is just a very limp piece of paper. This has a little bit more um, consistency to it, which is going to give us a firmer wing. So in this case, and you can kind of hear it, the wings ha are hard. And they're fairly stiff. If you're going like this and moving the butterfly, whereas this butterfly or moth, which I haven't finished, this is made with the paper and you can see how it's way more pliable um, than the firmer cardstock. And I think the firmer cardstock actually works much better. So you're going to take your mold or you're going to take your pattern and we'll just pick any pattern. We're gonna use the medium moth pattern. And you want to cut out your pattern and take your piece of paper. And this is our thicker card stock. And you're going to fold it in half because we want two wings. Fold your card stock in half and lay your wing down. Now on the pattern, you will see that it says top left. And that is because the wing shape is slightly different. So in order to keep the shape 
um, the way that I've done these, then just make you sure you know which one is top and bottom. And then we're just going to cut it out. And this isn't a difficult thing. I don't think you have to trace it or anything. It's just easy to use your little template. Your pattern like this. And now I know that um, actually this is the top left, which is going to be, I've got my top left so that when I open up the wings, they're in the proper spot. So this is my right, this is my left. And if you want, in order not to get mixed up, you can put L and R at the top so you know the orientation of the wings. I'm just going to move this out. So now that we've got our top wings, we're going to do the same with the bottom wing that you can see there, the smaller wing. And I've already pre-cut these, so I have two. And I know that this is the top left. So basically, I'm just going to position them the way that the butterfly will look. Oops. So I've just laid out my pattern the way that I'm going to cut it. So now that I've got my pattern, the next step is going to be to get my linens. And in this case, you can have, this is a little bit of lace, but you can use um, a solid. This was a little napkin, and I was able to use this to make a small butterfly, and I've used it on the bottom wings, and then uh, a different color on the top. But you can basically use any kind of linens that you have. Here's another pretty one, it's just a, a little cloth. So if I wanted to use it on this, then take your wing and you're going to place it where you would like the design. So I'm going to use this small piece of lace, which actually I tie dyed with food coloring in advance because there was no color to it. You certainly don't have to do this, but if you do choose to uh, use the food coloring, then first you have to soak your uh, doily in water and a tablespoon of vinegar um, in order for the cotton to accept the color. And then you add your food coloring to your uh, fabric, allow it to dry a little bit, rinse it through water until the water is clear, and then put it in a bowl with a teaspoon of salt and let it sit for five minutes. And that should set the color, let it dry, and that's basically what I've done. Place your wings where you would like to see that fabric. And maybe an easier way to do it is slip it underneath to see how it looks. Always keeping in mind that there's a right and a left. And then you can flip it over once you've picked your design. And at this point, you just want to pin it. Pin it in position. So it looks like this. And then all you're gonna do, I've got my fabric scissors, all you're going to do is trace it out. Now, if you had a linen that didn't have a pattern, you could just fold it over and of course, put the wing on top, cut it out, and you'd have two pieces. But I just wanted to make sure that I was getting the design, which is why I'm cutting one at a time. It also helps if your linens have been pressed because then they sit much nicer and it's easier to really cut a, perf a perfect, um, the perfect shape. 
So now I have my two wings that have been cut. They actually go like this. So the designs are symmetrical, which is what you want. And I already know that um, this is going to be, actually that's left and right. It's like this. So the pattern is symmetrical. I know that these are the tops. So my next two petals are going to go down here. And I'm just gonna pick a coordinating color. It could be anything. In this case, I have some cream. I have some cream from another project and this is solid. So all I have to do make my fold, add my pattern, pin it, trace it, and now I have my two patterns, which I'm going to open it up I know which sides are up. So I have my pattern cut and I have my cardstock below it or underneath it. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these two together. I'm going to glue the fabric to the cardstock. So I'm just going to flip these over so that I don't get mixed up. And then I'm just going to flip them back once I'm ready to glue. And all I'm going to do is just use some Elmer's glue. And this part, you want to make sure that you're doing this on uh, something that you can throw away. I've just got a file folder. And you just want to make sure that you spread the glue 100%. Now, when you're using this cardstock, you have to work fairly quickly because the as soon as you add the glue, the paper wants to start to curl. So you want to hold it down, and you want to. There isn't a lot of give once you actually lay your fabric down. And you're just going to lay it right on the piece of paper. And you want to make sure that you 100% fully smooth it out. So there is total contact with the paper and the glue. Like this. And at this point, flip it over and just make sure that that is really sticking together. So I'm just gonna leave that for a minute and then we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. I line up the tip and then slowly drop the fabric on to the cardstock. And these fabrics they are going to have, especially vintage fabrics, they're going to have some stretch one way or another. So you just want to make sure there's 100% contact with the paper and the glue. Right to the edges. Turn our fabric over, oops. Use your cork if you need help in making sure that that sits flat. And then slowly I just lay it down. And as you can see, the fabric moved a bit. So I didn't catch these little edges, but that's okay because we can trim it off once it's dry. So now that we've got everything glued down, we're going to again take a look at the shape that we want it. So all we're going to do at this point is we're going to fold the wings and not give it a hard, hard crease, 
but just fold it to shape it like this. Give it a little fold and they will take on the shape. Again, I'm just folding the little end, giving it a bit of a crease and just cupping it a little bit and turning it into this little wing. And I'm gonna then, do that. Now we've got, we're beginning to see what our moth will look like. So we're beginning to get the design. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to join the two ends like this. And we're going to put two pins through both pieces. So we want two holes. Essentially, we are creating the hole that we're going to use to attach the wings, to sew the wings onto the body. If you do not make the holes and add the pins at this time, it will be very difficult to sew later on. So I've added my two holes and basically you want to give it a little bit of a fold because the wing will attach like this. So here we have the body of our butterfly and what we're going to do is once our wings are dry we're going to attach them like this and that's why you need this little bend right here because it kind of tells you where you're going to be attaching and of course the two holes you're going to be sewing it together this way and we're going to be attaching it close to the uh, neck of the butterfly. So when we put the butterfly together, it's going to be looking like this. We'll open it up and play around with it a little bit so that it looks more like a butterfly, but essentially this is what we're doing. So I've got my bend. I have my two pins. I'm just going to arrange my wings the way I like them. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Crease like that, oops. I don't want to glue my wing together. So, and you will find that um, the wings are quite pliable now and they feel really soft, but once they fully dry, they will stiffen. So this is what we're going for. We've got our pins. We're going to let this dry overnight until it's nice and stiff. And then we'll be able to um, attach our body once I show you how to make that. So we're gonna put these off to the side and let them dry overnight. Or you can pretend it's been 24 hours. So I've got another one that I've started yesterday. And this is nice and firm as you can see. It's nice and stiff. And now I need to make the body to attach these wings. So now we have our wings off to the side. And for the body, we're going to need some filler. And I'm just using a dried lavender. Oh, what a mess. And I'm using it right off my lavender wands. So I just remove these. Now, the branches have a lavender scent too. So I'm not gonna waste them. I'm gonna put them in my bullet. I'm gonna break them up into a powder and I'm going to add it to uh, my lavender. So you can add it all together. It really smells wonderful. So we have about an eighth of a cup of our lavender and it smells fantastic. And now for our body, we're going to need, um, we're going to attempt to make something like this. We're going to need some cooking, this is just cotton kitchen string that's used for uh, baking or trussing your chicken or beef or whatever. I have some white 
and I've got some beige, but you could even use embroidery thread or anything that you like. And we're going to need a piece of gauze that's about eight and a half by 11. And all we're gonna do is we're going to take our design and we're going to cut out a piece of cheesecloth that is fairly, measures the same size as the paper. So eight and a half by 11. It's just, that's approximately eight and a half by 11. So I've got my print. I'm gonna add the gauze over it, overhang it a bit, and I'm just gonna use this as my guide to actually lay all of the lavender on here, um, just so I know approximately the size. And I'm just going to add my lavender and then this is the part that's a little bit tricky, but you want to fold over the cheesecloth and try and roll it tightly. And I usually start from the center, the thickest part, because you're rolling it like a cigar. And then I roll the outsides, try and keep them tight. And what ends up happening is that because I've got more of my filling in the middle, then I could just pull it and you can see, how I'm thinning it out on the ends while keeping it thick in the middle. And you've got give with the cheesecloth because it stretches and moves. But what you really want is try and keep it as tight as possible. So I know that as you are rolling it, it's going to be curving like this slightly because you've got more pop pourri in the center. So I just make sure that once I get to this point, I try to roll from the outsides And when I get to the end, and I've got my general shape, oh, we got I've got my general shape, but I've got all this leftover um, gauze. So I'm going to trim it up. I'm going to cut it so that it is straight all the way along so that I've got one even seam. So now I've got one even seam that runs along the bottom. That's going to be the tail. So all you're gonna do for the tail is you're gonna fold it over on one side and you're gonna fold it over on the other side for your head. So you're folding both ends and you're essentially creating your head and your tail. And then we're just going to add some more string in between. Then I take another piece of string and I do the same thing and I wind it just to create a little head like this. Create any kind of design that you like. See, so it's just a little tied up wand. Then I'm gonna finish it off with a knot. My wand. My lavender wand, which smells very nice. And you can do this in, um, you can use the cheesecloth, or if you wanted to use fabric and um, you wanted to stuff it with some padding is you take your pattern and you'd cut this out you'd cut out the um 
cut out the body pattern by using a piece of fabric. Say for instance, I wanted to use this color. Take your pattern, cut it out. Tape your fabric on a fold. And take, this is the fold. Put your pattern on here. And then you're just going to cut this out. And then you're going to sew this by hand and you're So now you've cut out your pattern. It should look like this. And when you open it up, it looks like that. And you can fill this with either your pot pourri and then sew all the way along, or you can just fill it with batting and sew it all the way along if you want this just for um, decoration. You just want a little bit of padding and you're just gonna roll it into the shape like so. So I've sewn it along the top and the bottom is whole so you can see. And all you have to do is Take your pattern, put your um, batting inside, and then I start from the tail here, and you want to turn the raw edges in. Turn the raw edges in so that it looks like this. And then you're going to slip stitch this all the way along, just turning the little edges in and sewing as you go. And you will get something that looks like this. As I came back and made the head. So create your head, fold it over, tie it with strings so that you're getting a head like this. Now the next step, I've got these all these dried wings. We're going to want to sew our wings onto our body. Now if you want the body to look colored like this, so I food coloring on this and I just diluted it and just added a bit of food coloring and let it dry, but this is not, uh, I can't guarantee that it's going to be 100% color fast. So this would be nicer for a decorative moth as opposed to putting in your drawers. And I would keep the ones that are plain white gauze for going into your drawers. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our wings. And I've got different wings that I've already dried and I'm going to attach them close to the top of the head. So now I can remove my pins. Whoops. Oh, that pin's broken. And there are the two little puncture holes, which we're going to use to sew our wings onto the body. So we'll take these out. And I'm going to position it, I want to position it right by the head, like this. And the reason I want to position it by the head is that I want to come in and finish it off with um, more string collar so that you don't see the connection. Now the other thing that I'm using is I'm using some very um, strong thread. I want a good, I've doubled the, the thread and I'm going to thread, I'm going to thread my needle with the double thread so every stitch will have four 
threads on it. And that just, by doubling up my thread, it just means that I don't have to sew as many times. More thread, less sewing. Now, because this is gauze, it's very hard to sew. The thread will go right through. So what I do is I start off, I've got a big knot. I start off underneath the head. I go through the top like that. And then I will take the thread and I will pass it through my loop like this. I'll pass it through my loop so when I pull it taunt There's my knot underneath. When I pull it taut, it'll hold. So it's totally holding. The next thing I do is I just make sure that my thread is coming out the side. So I just position my thread with, when you're sewing with four threads, you have to always make sure that you're keeping it very straight or you can uh, knot it easily. So now I want to attach my wing to the side of the head and I'm going to start off with the smaller wings and I'm going to put thread it through the bottom hole. So it's positioned nicely on the neck. And I'm gonna go through the top hole, like so. And I'm gonna go all the way through the other side. And now I'm going through that top hole. And I want to position my wings so that they are in line with the body. And then I'm just going to go through the bottom hole. There you go. So we're just going to sew our wings from side to side like that. So now I've gone through it twice, and now I'm just going to add my top wing right over that small wing, and I'm gonna position my wing, and then go through the top hole, and through the other top hole, all the way through to the other side. I've sewn it all the way through on both sides. This is my last stitch. And this time, now that I've sewn it through on both sides a couple of times, You position and then I'm going to loop take my thread loop it and finish it off on the bottom now we have this awesome. and now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some string we're going to wrap it around just to finish off these little edges so you don't see them is wrap it around like that, tie it on the bottom, trim it off so it's neat, arrange my wings,
And now that just finishes it off nicely, tidies it up. What we're going to do is we need to make some antennas for this little guy. I think I'll use, you can use any color antennas. It could be green, it could be brown, it could be black. And basically, um, you're just gonna take your pipe cleaner and you're just gonna bend it to the length that you want. That's how long I want my antennas. So that's about, about six inches long. You're gonna cut your pipe cleaner. And then you're going to take, you need to take a toothpick or a skewer and you're gonna pierce from side to side a little hole that is going to be your guide to get your pipe cleaner through. You can see it's just creating a little hole for me there. I take it out, I take my pipe cleaner and you push it through. And you can only push it through when the pipe cleaner has all of the little fluffy um, its fur on it. But we're not gonna leave it like that. We actually want to burn away the pipe cleaner leaving two little round balls. So this is gonna turn into that. And you can't do this in advance because it's very difficult to get the pipe cleaner in there if you do. All you wanna do, and you wanna be careful because you have to use a lighter, and you're just gonna pull out your pipe cleaner as far out as you can and this goes really quickly. So you just wanna take your, and you're just basically burning off. And you're just leaving the end. And sometimes I just burn the end so it goes pointy. Let that cool off, and then you're going to gently pull it through. Once you burn this off, it's difficult to get this through, which is why you want to get it in through the, uh, the fabric before in advance. So now we're gonna do this side, and it's just It burns very quickly. Split second. And then the little tip. Doot. Just to make it pointy. So now we've got our antenna. And we're just going to bend them up. And bend them over. And that's your antenna. And they look adorable. They look cute and green and brown and all different colors. And that's basically it. This is your moth. You can open up the, uh, the wings so that they look a little bit cuter. And that's it. And it's a scented moth that you can use in your drawer. Now, I've made... Um, in this instance, the edges weren't as clean as I liked. So all I did, once it's dry, just take your scissors, clean up those edges. and it just really cleans them up by just cutting them once they're dry. So that's it for our moths. And as you can see, you can create all kinds of different designs and mix and match 
your wings to create different looks. Some are bigger, some are smaller, but they all are beautifully unique in their own way. And like I mentioned, um, we didn't get to use our paint brushes because what I did was come in and just paint some of these bodies with, um, you can use fabric paint, or like I said, I did use food coloring, but I wouldn't use this in my drawer. I just use this for decoration, and that's where you would use that. And as I mentioned before, if you've got your moth and it's lost a little bit of its scent, then it's easy just to give it a drop of lavender essential oil just to reactivate that beautiful scent of lavender. So I've got all my moths done. I've still got two more to go. This is the one that we started with. I think that's gonna look really cute. This is a smaller one that I have yet to put together, but it's a smaller butterfly. And one thing that I did do, if you like the edges or if you want, the edges of your wings to be uh, trimmed, trimmed off, then like I said, you can either cut them to get the smooth finish or you can use, um, use fabric paint and just go along the edge like that, which kind of seals it and just gives it a nice finished edge. Some beautiful scented drawer moths. And I think these are not only going to be great in my drawer, it's going to make, uh, it's great in a linen closet to make your towels smell great. And it's just nice for decoration. It's a really pretty thing. It also makes a great gift or a hostess gift. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and you try it, you like this, I hope you share it. Happy sewing.